Stop! Please! Holy oh, shit. Hey, what's up? This is Community Service with Craig Conan. That's me. Hey, everybody. Today, we have a big damn guest, and our podcast is brought to you by my Patreon, and I just wanted to thank all the OG Patreon people that have been me since day one that have uh, funded my podcast and paid my producer, Chris Lunn, and that's an alarm going off. Because I have a rehab show via Zoom. It's going to be a shit show. Uh, nothing like performing for junkies through the internet, right? Am I right? Just kidding. Get sober. This is a weird <laughs> intro. Thank you, Patreon members uh, subscribing to my podcast since day one. Daniel Neves, Cody Chris, Garrett Smith, Yvette, Brittany Kozdial, Miss Amber Noir. I have a feeling that's not a real name. Kayla Archer. Daniel Gorman, the big dumb white boy himself. Sandy Cheeks Numb. I have a feeling that's not their name either. <laughs> Sylvia Alexis. Hunter Holt. Marcy Pease. Chris Lunn. You subscribe? Yeah, I got to keep up to date. You're the producer. <laughs> Eric Martin. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I, I, uh, that's not her name, but thank you. Kristen Streavy. Stephanie Lofel, Caitlin Jones, Andrew Hoffman, Jade Brokus. Those are my OG from day one Patreon members. I appreciate you. Thank you for funding this shit. I got to plug my dates. Hey, Austin, Texas, Texas, you been asking your boy when he's coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Kapak. Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas, November 5th. Show is at 9 p.m. Door is at 8 p.m. I said that backwards. <laughs> Thursday, November 5th at the Vulcan Gas Company. One nighter, one night only, one show. So don't say, get a babysitter, go to the show. I'm in Texas one night. I want everybody to come. Bill Burr thinks I'm funny, so you go yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you all. Austin, Texas, November 5th at the Vulcan Gas Company, 418 East 6th Street, Austin, Texas, 78701. Now, there's all your info. Thank you so much for some more supporting, not some more, supporting Community Service Podcast and myself. And if you do like this podcast, give it a thumbs up or the stars. You know, you click the stars, you hit subscribe. You don't even have to subscribe. Like, click subscribe and then go go away, you know? Does that make sense? <laughs> Basically, give me a thumbs up. I need the, I need the help. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Mm. Couldn't take two seconds to help a hippie. Anyways, I love you all. Subscribe, like, thumbs up, rate, review, write the little bios. This guy's a dumb dumb. I love him. You know what I'm saying? And today's podcast is none other than the man himself, Bill fucking Burr. Bill Burr, baby, right off of SNL, coming at you via Zoom, via the internet, because he's got a family and shit. He don't trust me, and I don't blame him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I almost lost my nephew in the ocean. You'll hear about it on the podcast. Okay, I love you all. Thank you so much. Peace. Okay, we're rolling. All right, let's do it. All right, man. What's up? How are you? <laughs> no, I'm good, dude. Thank you so much for doing this. You're for sure. No worries. It's crazy. I, yeah, I I, uh, I met you a lot throughout my 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 time in this game, and uh, and then and then you were always nice to me. But it wasn't until what like six months ago you you actually knew who I was. How did you know? Like, how? where did you finally see me? I started your, your videos on Instagram. All of a oh, sudden, good. I just started watching them, and, and you had this silly vibe. I was like, this guy's funny. You're funny. And Thank then I, I went, I started watching your stuff, uh, the storytelling thing, the, the one where you got busted, and the cop was somebody you went to high school with. I saw yeah. that one. I saw the one where you were uh, drinking out in the woods, and some park ranger was like... <laughs> You can't drive, <laughs> yeah. but you can't stay here. All of that stuff. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, I was just, you know, I am a fan of comedy. Well, thanks, dude. The internet. The internet. Yeah, I have a pick. Who the needs internet. an agent when you have the internet? Yeah. I got fucking Bill Burr from the internet. I have a picture of us when I first started. You got a full head of hair and everything. Look at that, dude. Well, that must have been a while ago. 
Yeah, that was like I was maybe a year into stand up. And then you were super nice. I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I need a photo. I fucking love you, dog. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, man. And then you just took it without well, hesitation. Well, I'll tell you this. So, being funny and being nice will get you a long way. Yeah. Because if you don't make it, the person you were nice to was making, they're like, hey, I remember that guy. He was a good shit. And they yeah. put you in. You get to play the bald uncle. It works. I, I, <laughs> 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 On your hit to, must-see yeah. TV show. I try to tell my asshole friends that. They don't fucking listen. I'm like, you know, you just could not be a dickhead and it'll go. It'll go a long way. They, they don't listen. I they like the listen. people in the business who uh, it's like where they're at is how they treat you and they think you don't notice. Oh, we notice. Yeah, everybody like everybody notices. And I actually think being that person is worse than just consistently being a dick. Because if you're just consistently yeah. a dick, it's like, well, he's kind of, or he or she's just a dick to everybody. You know, that's what you're signing up for. But if, if it's the, uh, oh, well, I, I did a little uh, Snickers commercial and now you can say hi to me. It's it's crazy <laughs> what people will get that gives them that ego, too. You're like, dude, like you're headlining a cafe. Like, yeah, that doesn't count, man. Like, I know. come on. And they it's still fun. get the ego. I actually saw you at, at Bob's Espresso Bar at an open mic. I was doing an open mic and you, oh, you rolled man, I up. I love that place. I love you had, that place and that guy. And you had Dean Del Rey open for you. You brought an opener to an open mic and I was fucking dying, dude. But we were friends with Bob and he had he, that coffee shop, you know, with COVID doesn't exist anymore. But like, you know, he was uh, a friend of Dean's, became a friend of mine, played Damone in Fast Times at Richmond High and he had this little coffee shop. And he was just such a cool dude. Um, that reminds me, I'm, I got to go. I was supposed to smoke a cigar with him. I don't think I got around to that. But um, yeah, so he was just like, oh, we can come down and do a show here. He'd be like, oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. So that's fucking awesome. That's how we ended up there. I don't smoke cigars. That's smart. I'm trying to cut down. <laughs> I, I'm sober. Do you know that? I'm seven years sober. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm sort of sober. Like I don't I don't booze at all. But occasionally, uh, just to switch it up, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take a couple hits off a joint or have a gummy or something like that. Oh. But, but I'm not like, I'm not a weed guy. I'm just not. Weed doesn't count. Weed saved my life from other other devils. But yeah. I was gonna say I don't know you super well, but I was gonna say you probably shouldn't drink. You know, you remind me of of my dad a little bit. Not, oh, not, well, I don't not, know your not, dad, but just the tone you just he's... took, I think I know your dad a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 believe it or not, I was a happy drunk. Oh, you were? Oh, yeah, dude. I loved oh, man. it. I, I was like, I fucking love you, man. This is great. Face well, then down. you don't remind me of my father. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't. My... Uh, there's nothing. There's Oh. A surly drunk on gets a couple of scotches in him, and then it's just like, whoa. Yeah. Just, I don't know what surly means. That's um, what it's one of those you make the waitress cry type of person. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hates me. No, but you but know what's from... amazing though is that you had an angry dad. You don't. You wouldn't know it. Like usually. If you grew up in a, like a rage-filled house like I do, you have like an edge to you. I've always been amazed at people because not all my siblings are like me. Some of us are hot-headed, others are just kind of like, ah, whatever, dude. But like I'd always found that interesting that that someone like you could come up with in an angry, not like my my. I didn't have any angry drunks around me, but we would definitely. Uh, it was definitely the, you know two minutes left in the game was the vibe, and it yeah. was you know you know fourth down long was was the tension in the house but uh you know to come out of that and actually be your vibe is cool. like i'm working towards being more like you like chill yeah. <laughs> just eat a, a a quarter of mushrooms and shit your pants and you'll you'll come out a, a i'm afraid person. of mushrooms yeah i think if you, you're you? like you you can do mushrooms i think if you're like <laughs> me there's gonna be monsters coming out of the couch and shit so i i, I never uh well, that's what changes you. The monsters, man, for sure. Oh, you just got to walk through the monsters. All right. You got, you got, it's, it's, it sounds weird and hippie, but it's true. Like it's, it becomes such a bad 
thing that you have like a rebirth. You're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go hug my mom and get sober. I'll be all right, you know. And uh, it's weird, but that did have that type of effect right. on me. Okay. I, I'm still, uh, I gotten this far without meeting the monsters. So I think <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I got two little kids, man. I just don't, what am, what, what am I going to, what am I going to be tripping? Oh, they sat You're down kid. for their nap. They were down for their nap. I think now I'll go hallucinate for four hours. while they, <laughs> I just don't think that I, I, I missed, I missed the mushroom window. Yeah, I would agree. I forgot the kid. I imagine you tripping and your kid walks in. You're like, oh, that's mine. I created yeah. that. That's the type of shit. Just is that, that baby me thinking. talking to me? Yeah, <laughs> I would it is. That. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Bill was having a good run and then he just killed himself. Yeah. No, too dark, too dark. That's not My too dark. My dad's from from Boston. He's yeah. from back east. Well, let me talk. To, ask about the, the hallucinant stuff. I had a buddy of mine was like, who did acid and he goes he goes yeah you can see a lot of crazy stuff but it's not like those school movies where you actually think it's true you you're cognitively thinking okay i'm tripping that's why this person's face is melting you don't actually think it's happening is that true that is true it depends how much you take but yes that's true most of the time you are are coherent tripping if that makes sense yeah and uh, but then some I remember one time I wanted to push the envelope and I'm not a big guy and I ate like a quarter of mushrooms, which is way too, you should eat like two grams. I ate like seven grams. And I saw that that was another that I saw like like literally dragons in the sky and the tree like turned into flames. And I just projectile vomited like <laughs> Linda Blair and the exorcist in front of this poor little family. What did your just puke walking. turn into? Were you like blowing down <laughs> the flames off of the tree? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> and I just remember like apologizing even I was so gone to the family. I'm like, I'm sorry. And then my buddy just ran from me and I just sat on a bench by myself for about four hours. And uh, that was too much. Yeah, see, I, that's that's the thing. Like, I... I <laughs> You know what I was like? I like reminisce about booze. Like I actually yeah. went on the internet and I was looking up uh, Miller High Life ponies. You know, the little ones, those little adorable. They're like seven ounces. You never heard of what? ponies? I don't know. East Coast thing. I My, don't know what. They're, they're just the no. little ones. So they had a little one next to it. They had like a shot of like bourbon or scotch. And I was just like, I mean, that right there. You know, yeah. I don't need to do anything. I could just be happy doing that, sitting at a bar during the day, not talking to any of the regulars, just being quiet. And then occasionally yeah. eating a plate of heart attack food and just, <laughs> you know, and then going home and passing out at like seven at night. Um, I do like meeting dry drunks and then reminiscing about your favorite thing to do. Like I, I last year when I did the, uh, that movie for Judd and Pete Davidson, um, one of the producers had been sober for all these years and like he literally got to the point of almost being homeless. And I was telling him how much I missed day drinking. He's like, oh yeah. And he goes, you know what my move was? He goes, I'd wake up at noon and he goes, and I would get the paper and then I would just go to the bar and just start drinking and I would just read the paper. And I was just like, that sounds fucking unbelievable. And then he just goes, doesn't it? <laughs> just to sit there. You have no boss. You have nowhere to go. Whatever your problems are, you're running from. So they kind of don't exist then. And you just get to sit there and read the paper. I mean, I don't know. Kids today probably don't read papers or anything like that. But that's just like, I'll read the front section, get into the sports, look at the real estate. Hey, what movies are, are, are playing? And then occasionally, you know, get some, I don't know, fish and chips or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I like... I don't I, I don't need to go on vacation if I'm doing that. Like, oh, let's go to San Tropez. It's like, why don't we just find a good dive bar? Yeah. Get there at noon, dive... order some apps, and get after dive... it. Dive bars were my absolute favorite, and I did love day drinking, and I would uh, I would get hammered, but to sustain it through the night, I would go drink it with my sisters at Hermosa Beach, the pier, and day drinking, and then I would just disappear and go take a nap under the pier to recharge 
and then to stay out all night and then be like, where'd Craig go? And I was like, I'm back, you know? But that was my thing. And I, I do miss it. That shit was fun, man. I remember doing that one time down on the Cape in Massachusetts with this buddy of mine. And we got so fucked up, even knew we, we even knew we couldn't drive. And this was the 80s when everybody drove. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know where this country lost its swagger. But back in the yeah. day when I grew up, people had a belief in themselves, right? So we were both so hammered, we knew we couldn't drive. So we were somewhere near the ocean. And then I don't know if you call it a bluff. It was like a hill that sort of gradually led towards a cliff way off in the distance and then dropped down to the ocean. But it was this amazing view. So we sort of wandered halfway down. It was like a trail. We wandered off the trail and just laid down on the side of the hill, like in these shrubs and the grass, like sort of that, you know, near the uh, ocean sort of plants just laying there and I remember I don't know how much time went by but I remember I, I'd been there long enough that I was cold yeah and I heard this lady's voice going and then in 1692 the the, the pilgrims came and blah 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 she was doing this whole <laughs> thing and then it, as it was registering that there was some sort of tour going on <laughs> I heard this little kid's voice go mommy why are they laying down in the grass <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, then I that's, got that's... up. Uh, it's all a blur because we were fucking wasted. And my buddy had got a flat tire and I put the jack under the car and I didn't put it under the frame. I put it under the floorboard <laughs> <laughs> and it started to jack it up. And then the car came back down and the jack just went right up into it. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, and that was it was a whole summer of that. I mean, from like age about probably like 19 to 21 till I got a DUI like it was just it, yeah it was just mayhem just stupid 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 suburban white kid dumb shit like that oh yeah I don't know how I don't didn't get a DUI because well, they I, say uh, you got to do it at least like 600 times to get caught because there's so many drunk drivers versus the cops and uh that was 100% correct on, yeah. on my side. And the best thing that ever happened to me, thank God, is I got pulled over and arrested for that shit before I, I hurt somebody. Um, because, you know, I mean, that was... No, it's, yeah. That's just, but it's just what people did. It was Mothers Against Drunk Driving was just coming out. And I remember part of the... Um, part of the uh, sentence that I got the community service and loss of license was you had to go to um, a mother's again to two AA meetings and a mother's against drunk driving uh, meeting. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, like, that was when I was sweating. Like, oh, my God, I'm gonna have to sit there while these mothers who lost their children because of people like me, they're gonna be crying, they're gonna be yelling at me, throwing stuff. At me. It was the exact opposite. Showed up to an auditorium it was a bunch of drunks sitting in the crowd, like fulfilling this part of their, their sentence. <laughs> and then this poor woman up there trying to tell the story of how her kid died coming back from band practice, changing a tire. And these fucking assholes were bitching to her about their case. Oh my God. Like I blew a point away. You know, I drive for a living. I heard, and then the other guy yells, he goes, I think there's a statute that says that you drive, or there's some sort, I think it's called the something something statute. And the guy's like, I call it the working man statute. And then the ladies up there, yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, Brian was coming home. And that was the thing for me, is I sat there and I was like, wow. This is the, I'm in this demographic of mouth breathing fucking morons. I mean, I'm smart <laughs> enough to know that I'm supposed to be listening to her, but still. I'm way more like these people than that that person up there who has she has her act together. So that was like a huge thing where and I was also 21. So it was starting to become like, where's the fun in this anymore? I'm not getting away with anything. Now I'm just blowing money, you know, inching my way through college. I was horrifically behind. And so then after that, I mean, I started comedy a few years after that. You know, I, I got through college. I started comedy and then I didn't drink really at all and was that a dog or something that's my cat uh, we'll get him out. i thought someone wasn't enjoying the story i was like oh <laughs> shut oh, up no. No, so they, then, let them both out they're gonna fight i so, have cats 
when I started comedy, it just turned out the people I started out with, uh, Bobby Kelly, Dane Cook, Patrice O'Neill, none of them drank. And I was really like a follower. So if they were raging, I would have done it too. And they didn't, thank God. And then there was a bunch of, <clears throat> a bunch of headliners in Boston who in the 80s, you know, got paid in cocaine and, and I'm not even joking. And all yeah. of them were getting their wages garnished by the, the IRS. They couldn't even leave the state without informing them. And so many headliners I worked with started off with going, you know, their opening joke was, you know, or opening line was, so I've been sober for, you know, such and such amount of time. And we saw really funny people that you saw maybe had missed their window because of that. So it wasn't until um, in the 2000s when my personal life wasn't coming together when I was doing well and I was getting to a certain age and I wasn't married and I didn't want to be in a relationship and I didn't have any kids. And it was just like, the only thing I was good at was being a comedian. And so that was like 20 miles down the road and the rest of my life was still sitting there waiting to start. And I was sleeping on a futon and all that. Um, what I should have done was face my demons. But instead I met a man named Joe DeRosa. <laughs> nice. And oh, me and Joey hit it off. Now, Joe was only in his 20s, so his behavior was fine and normal. I mean, I think Joe was like 24, 25. I'm like 10 years older than him. And I was 34, 35. And I was like, well, this is easier. I really like this guy. I love Joe. He's one of my great friends. And where his He's life, awesome. Yeah, where his I, life is at right now feels way more comfortable than me facing whatever issues I have. So... I got back into drinking and continued hurting people in my personal life. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just, I was the worst. Sorry, I, I, was, no, I was the worst because I looked like, you know, the Norman Rockwell painting. This is a guy you can settle down with. And I was, a, I was the exact, I was a clusterfuck. So um, yeah, and then, then I met my now wife and my whole life came together. But then I sell, I don't, yeah, I'm trying to work this. Then I started selling tickets and I started drinking beer. I was drinking beer and I was getting fat. So I was just, rather than quitting beer, I was like, well, I'll switch to hard stuff because it, it's just a teeny weeny thing. All of this was just, why don't you just stop drinking? And I didn't. Yeah. So then I started doing that. But then what happens is your tolerance goes up and now you can drink like a fucking Viking. That's what happened. And then I started making money on the road. And then I was like, oh, this is Peppy Van Winkles. And so, you know, now I'm like this, you know, top shelf drunk. So, I mean, I did that to like my late 40s until I was finally like, right, I, I got to stop this. I got to stop. So nice. Well, that's I'm glad it. you stopped. Yep. <clears throat> I got arrested three times, got raided and tried to hook up with my cousin. So I was like, all right, I'm done. Uh, first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so i'm seven years sober i probably shouldn't have said all that anyways this is probably hey you yeah, know we all have a different <laughs> bottoming out <laughs> <laughs> how, oh, did, how did that apology go down i just sorry uh, no. i know we're related <laughs> uh i guess I are you kidding me? I buried my head in the sand. I haven't faced that. I'm a dry drunk, too. I went to AA for like three months. I was like, I ain't making amends. I'm fucking out of here, dude. Oh, Anyways, wow. yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to edit this part out? No, I don't know. Maybe not. I Anyways, believe that. I believe I'm you're sweating, dude. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the fear in your voice. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's life. As any bad event... <laughs> <laughs> that's such a great out eh, it's not i mean things happen <laughs> things happen well that's like the my whole shit is like uh the the theme of my act and and like out of bad can come something good like i always like a goal of mine was like yo uh, to the knuckleheads out there who are down in the depths of hell like you could get out you know i just moved to the beach and i used to uh I used to have scabs on my nutsack and live with my mom, you know? Like, now I live by the beach. I got a hot girl. I sell stickers on the internet. Bill Burr's on my podcast. This is dope, you know? 
I don't need to know about the scabs, man. <laughs> Was that the last okay. place you could shoot up? I don't need to know that. No, yeah. I thank God I never shot up. I used to smoke and and sniff and whatnot. But I used to brush my my nuts with my sister's bristle brush, like a fucking you would scratch a dog's butt, you know. And then, uh, anyways, uh, how are you, Bill? <laughs> no. I'm doing anyways. good. Okay, I'm getting nervous now. There's no reason to be nervous. I had a dog too. We just did. We just did different things. I took my dog on a hike. So my I'm dog sober had now. It's asshole. I let him handle it. Or I yeah. let her handle it herself. <clears throat> but yeah, that's my whole shit. Is like you can you can get out, you know, because when you're down there, you don't think you could get out. And you can. You fucking Yeah, now can. look at you. You're telling yeah. jokes for a living. You're doing all of that. Like, no, I, there's no way anybody no. You know, thought you were coming out of that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I wasn't I was invited to weddings for a good decade, you know. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. My mom's proud of me now. It's crazy. It's weird. Well, that's weird. good for you. Good for yeah. you. You got good energy. You got a positive, you got a positive light around you. Yeah. Well, thank you, bud. Um... I did want to ask you, like, how was SNL, man? That was shit. Let's talk about something better than what I was just talking about. Um, that was the most exciting thing I've ever done professionally. I bet. And I've done a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. That um, I've never had a high off of doing something for so long. I finally came down a little bit today. And this is what? Stay Friday? So six yeah. six days of feeling a hundred feet tall, and then today I was in an auto center trying to figure out what was wrong with my wife's car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Sam Can Adams. Can you guys just sketch. handle this? Nah, it's gonna be uh, about six hours. You want to wait? You want to say, all right, here we go. All right, we're back. We're back to life. Back to the real stuff. So, no, it was um, it was it was the most exciting thing I ever did, and I was so happy that other comics liked it and the people that are into what i do liked it and that i didn't let myself or anybody down because you don't want to it's a weird show you don't want to just you don't it's not a weird show it's it's when it's that big you don't want to just do okay yeah you you want to you want to feel great listen whether it's great or not is up to the people that at home when they make comments and stuff. That's why I don't read them at all. So, cause if I walk out and I feel great, there's nowhere to go but down if you go on the internet. All right? Yeah. And if you feel bad, you're gonna, you're gonna eat and, and you think that this is the lowest. You, if you go on the internet, you're gonna go way down. Cause people, cause you're just a cartoon to them. Whatever, they're taking out their bullshit on you. It's just, you don't wanna be on it so the only thing I did was I went on Twitter and I thanked Lauren and, and the whole cast and everybody over there told, said I had a great time. And other than that, for the most part, I didn't read shit. Um, I took a peek at a couple of headlines. I just Googled my name to see what they were saying. And, it's, and I just, you know, all right, that seems overall like people dug it. And then I just, I, you leave it alone. Then, and then you just pretend like it didn't happen. And go to AutoZone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go to <laughs> No, it was it was absolutely amazing and I loved the monologue. I loved the Sam Adams sketch and that that was just funny, the father son shit. And, oh yeah. Uh, that shit was amazing. Yeah, that I was think that, uh, that my... was Mikey Day and uh Streeter wrote that and um Yeah, there's uh if they ever wanted to do some outtakes, we had, we had some pretty Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of options on that. It was just such a, I mean, they just all the writers over there just teed me up. They they figured out what my wheel. I mean, they're amazing at what they do. So, your your every sketch was just sitting there on the golf tee. Yeah, you know, and you come up with a driver like this big. There was sort of no way to miss what they um, what they had put together for me. And then you're gonna go out and do these sketches with like Groundlings and Second City and UCB people, and they they're gonna get you through it. So. All you got to do as a comic is just go out, have fun, do your monologue. And then after that, you do these sketches and it's the, it's the best time. I really see why people 
love sketch comedy and doing it. I had so much, I had so much fun doing it. So it was great. I think that might have been the only SNL I watched in its entirety. I was more a mad TV guy growing up. I don't know if that's a Mexican thing or what, but I always went to the bootleg, you know? No, no, but, I watched, uh, I, I, be honest with you, I've watched, um, I watched them all. I watched Saturday Night Live, been watching that for like 40 years. Not as much as I would like just because, you know, it comes on Saturday night and I'm usually on the road. So I've missed a lot, but I, I try to catch it with the clips. Um, then I watched the ripoff Fridays when SNL blew up. There was another network that came out with the sketch show that they put up on Friday night that had a young Michael Richards in it. I watched that. I watched, uh, what was that, the Canadian one, the SCTV. Yeah. Uh, then there was In Living Color. And yeah, I grew up with that. Fire yep. Marshall and then Bill. there was uh, uh, Mr. Show. And then I watched Chappelle Show. You were on Chappelle, Chappelle Show. Show. I watched Mad TV. I watched, uh, I've watched them all. And then what was some of the other? It was one, oh, Key and Peel, of course. I watched yeah. that one. And um, I, I was actually, I almost said Broad City because I was thinking like the show like <laughs> well, when I was on Comedy Central, th those are my shows, Broad City, Key and Peel, and of course South Park. Like that was my that was my 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 thing. And um and watching Broad City, I remember when they were going off the air and there was something about how they had never I don't think they even were nominated for an Emmy or or just certainly never won one. And I just remembered I got a lot out of that, of thinking like, okay, so these award shows, there's a, there has to be a ridiculous level of politicking going on. If for sure, if if they don't win, because that show was, I, I fucking love that show. I haven't seen much of that show, but every episode I have seen like sticks out. Like when that girl shit in the shoe at that <laughs> house and like had to throw it up. Like I'll never <laughs> forget that. That's brilliant. That is shit is so funny. Yeah, and one I the, can't one say the, that one about of the other last shows. Ones I saw was the one where uh, they were renting office space, like in um, in uh, like uh, what is it, Union Square? I don't even. I always. I, it's hard for me to remember stuff, but like every time I, my wife got me watching it, and um, I just thought that they were one of the great comedy duos of yeah. the last two years. Like both of them were doing something totally different. They complemented each other. And I just thought it was so original and so funny. And and everybody I knew thought it was hilarious. And then, and then for, to see them like on the last year being like, hey man, we never won an Emmy. I was just like, what the yeah. fuck? It doesn't make any sense. So. No, no. I, I actually did sketch at, at one, in the very beginning, I was scared of stand up, So I went to Second City and I was terrible at it. Yeah, I, everything would come. I was so nervous and so new that everything would come out in a southern woman's accent, and like I couldn't break it. And the teacher would be like, "Stop it!" And I'd be like, "I couldn't." I was just this weird fucking guy. But I, because I did stand up at the comedy store, I took a class, mm -hmm. and I actually did really good. But then I was just so terrified of it. I was like, "All right, I gotta go be in the comedy universe." So I went to Second City, went through the whole program. Right. Ah. Uh, and it was yeah but that'll was, come back that'll come back and help you out because then you get yeah i remember i used to take acting class the acting teacher used to have somebody come up sit on the floor and hold my ankles so i would stop moving <laughs> in the scene because I, I would just be so nervous i i couldn't yeah i couldn't stand still and like if you my early stand-up my early my vhs tapes from back when you were like two years old it's just me going like not proud yeah. the stage, just like that, that, that. And my movement <laughs> has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Flop sweat, dry mouth, yeah. just oh, like, like, so a, I, like a tennis match. I took some acting classes too, and it was it was supposed to be like a dramatic, angry scene, but I, I just, it's not in my wheelhouse, and everyone was laughing, like I was killing, but it wasn't, that wasn't what was supposed to happen. And then I remember the teacher saying, like, you're doing everything wrong, but it's so entertaining. Like, I don't want to change it. You That's know? perfect. And then, then. Yeah, because you're going to figure out. Eventually, you figure out yourself and what it is you do. And then that kind of becomes like the 
foundation. And then, then off of that, you keep working on yourself to get better at these things um, that you do. And then you'll be able to do like the drama stuff and all of that, or, um, or be able to handle more and more pressure gigs. You know, with yeah. each level you go, the pressure gets more and more and more and more. And um, just through messing up on the way up, like, uh, you know, like when I was standing behind the door waiting to come out, I had the right amount of nervous excitement. I yeah. know where I need to be emotionally so I can go out there and 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 do what it is that I need to do and execute it. So, you know, I, I can't be too relaxed because then I'm just going to be that half a beat behind and everything's going to lay flat. And then I'm going to rush and I'm going to go past where I'm supposed to be. And by the time I figure it out, I'm going to be on my last joke. If I go out too nervous, I'm going to blow through it too fast. Um, it's a weird thing. But you, if you pay attention, you, you sort of figure yourself out and, you know, you're able to, you know. I know for the longest time, I remember I loved sit down acting. If I was sitting down in a scene, it was great. Because it's like, all right, I'm sitting down. So for some reason, I would get rooted in the scene. But if I was standing up, I would have to move. And then once I figured out how to do that, then there was the one of the worst things ever. Standing in a scene while somebody else is talking and I don't have any proper object in my hand. And then you become aware of your hands. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> and uh, yeah, all of those stupid little things over the years it's, you know you hang so in there weird. for 28 years and it all comes together <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy i'm 10 years and i finally got a kitchen i didn't have a kitchen till a month ago that's amazing I, that's a I big a deal studio. i got a i got i've been doing dishes bill <laughs> that's a big deal <laughs> it is man i i moved to the beach it's it's fucking dope yeah you know what's great it's, too is uh if you do your dishes, dry them and put them away before you go to bed. Psychologically, I, from myself anyways, if I go downstairs, I hate seeing yesterday's problems because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be washing those fucking dishes and then my phone's going to start buzzing with today's bullshit as I'm dealing with what I did last night. I just like, I, I kind of like waking up and being able to just have like my time to hang with my daughter and my son and my wife have a little bit of something to eat before there comes the whole uh you know all oh, that vote thing just came in you got to vote and where, where do you drop off so people don't throw your vote out and oh the car is fucked up and you know <laughs> yeah all of that stuff starts coming in so it's like all right here we go another day another day i i, I need the breakfast Without, you know. Uh, no, I, the weird thing is in the studio, like it was a well-oiled machine because everything had to be. Like everything had a hook. I couldn't bring in a flannel without getting rid of a handle. Flannel. Handle. It was just a shoebox, you know. But now I have space and I, now I'm leaving like the coffee out. And like before that would drive me nuts. I don't yeah. know. It's only been a month, but. Well, hey, now that you got a bigger space, don't fill it up with a bunch of shit. I try. I'll try not to. Yeah, because I'm, dude. Tell me, I've been trying to get rid of a lot of shit. I give it to homeless people and stuff, you know, because I know if I go to... <laughs> no, because if you go to Goodwill, they just throw it in the ocean. So, yeah, um, it's true. I, I was swimming with it earlier. Hit, yeah. The boot hit me. So I'm trying to like really like downsize my life as far as just like just having a bunch of stuff. Like, I swear to God, if somebody gives me a gift bag, like, I, I, I do something, here's a gift bag, I say no, I don't want it. I don't want it, because that's, because <laughs> then the shirt that says the name of the gig eventually will be sentimental to me, and then I can't throw it out, and then it's part of this stupid plastic tub of shit, of free shirts that I got from stand-up gigs and acting gigs and shows that I did, that, um, what am I going to do with it, you know? I mean, this big yeah. shit, like, the, I, I got some stuff from Chappelle's show. That's awesome. I keep that. But, like, most of the stuff, it just becomes this thing that takes up space. And then every time you move or want to get something in the closet, you got to move this 
fucking thing. Uh, I, I, I'm a fan of that, and I, I moved maybe like seven, eight times in a decade. So mm-hmm. I would just reduce, reduce, reduce. Always the smaller places too, as comedy progressed. As yeah. I got better at stand up, the apartment got smaller, and not anymore. But uh, and then yeah, th- you just move a box to an apartment, an apartment. You're like, I didn't even open that goddamn box. And now I I don't I do the homeless too, but I go to the projects like the hood, All and right. I just set the boxes out. Because I don't want to give it to Goodwill. You learn about those companies and it's it's not even, they're not even that good. You know, I'd rather give it to a poor family that will actually use that hand. Yeah, they'll actually whatever. use it. They'll use yeah. it. So, um, yeah, I try to, uh, I don't know, it's weird. It's the, the higher, it's funny, the higher up you go in the business, I feel anyways, the quieter you want your life and more simple and just want to get away from shit and go out, do the thing, kick ass on it. And then just come home and like, I, you know, so I was watching like old college football today. Like, I just feel I'm so fucking relieved. Like, I don't have any stress for the rest of the year. There's zero stress. I got past that big thing. And now I can just, I can watch football. I can watch old football. I can play with my kids. Um, we are writing season five of F is for Family right now. Nice. So, but that's just, that's just always been fun. And the people I work with are a lot of fun and, uh, you know, when you get this far along in a show, you know the characters so well that um, it really just becomes like, it's just a really fun, fun thing to do. It sucks that it's the last season, but it is. Nice. That's That was my goal to always be on a project that, that you, with friends that you love, as opposed to like nervous, like this isn't me. Like, why am I, do- oh, I'm doing this to pay my rent, you know, but like a, just a collaborative because I know Josh is on that show, Josh Adam Myers. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's my buddy. He, he I does, fucking love uh, that guy. He does how He encouraged Hank, me to ask DJ. you. He, he told me to ask you. I was like, I want to ask him to do my podcast. And I, I got scared and I sat back down and I wasn't going to. He's like, go fucking ask him. He'll do it. He thinks you're funny. And then I did. And then here you are. Yeah. So, Yo, yeah. go ask him. Go ask him. He got a fucking alligator Jewish woman voice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay don't any, get freaked any... out by silence we can just sit here and enjoy each other's okay. company you're the first person i ever wrote <laughs> notes for most of the time my friends are on it and then we sit in silence and i'm like come on motherfucker help me carry my show and uh i was prepared for you today all right well you've been crushing it uh, thank you um you brought up sports i actually don't watch any sports that's amazing because i I'm jealous I wa- of people that don't watch sports. Dude, I watched about 10,000 hours of sports with my father at the Moose Lodge, VFW, and American Legion by the time I was 12 years old. So when I hit high school, I was like, I'm fucking done, guys. I well, like- say what you want about your dad. The dude knows where to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are the spots. <laughs> you know what I you know used to love beers. about a dive bar back east in Massachusetts? Is when you'd go in there... When they would pour you that, that uh, off of the tap, the beer, and it would be that yeah. tall, skinny glass. It yeah. would be like seven ounces, you know, whatever. But rather than get in the bottle, and you could just crush them. Yeah. It was like a little bathroom cup, and you just suck those things down. <laughs> and there'd always be some guy, you know, some old guy, always wiping up. Yeah. Always wiping up, sort of angry. You know? Oh, for sure. And then you throw him a couple extra busts. You know, the Grinch. You get the heart to come out a little bit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I used to go to this place, uh, the Cafe Venice in Norwood, Massachusetts. That was a fun day drinking place. I think that place still exists. Um, yeah, and I just went on my warehousing days. And I'll tell you, yeah. we, it was so dumb. I don't know why we just didn't take a cab. We would just drive. We would. There'd be like eight guys. We're all meeting there. All eight of us would drive there, get shit faced. It'd be like a virus of drunk drivers, and we just spread out. All right, see you well, later. Well, people don't understand. It was a different time. That's just what you did. There was no Uber. Like even me, I'm 36. There was no Uber. We just drove drunk, and yeah, every These year somebody would up die. On, like motorcycles. I remember one night there was a there was a buddy of mine. He was a big time car guy, and every year he'd get a new car. And his thing was like, you know, dude, I'm never gonna own a house. So I mean, I was on a nice car. It's just like, well, yeah, well, not with that fucking attitude, you know. What? 
buying a car every year, so he would buy cars all the time. And he used to drink in these really big time dive bars, and he knew a lot of like Harley guys, um, like legit guys. Like back when having a sleeve of tattoos meant you did something. You know yeah. what I mean? Not that you were making artisan ice cream or some shit, right? <laughs> so we were drinking with this guy. It was like Dead Eye Pete. Was it, he was a tattoo artist. I knew him. No, I'm just kidding. Tattoo artist. And I had this shovel nose fucking Harley. And that fucking guy drank me under the table. And I just remember, he was like Jackie Gleason in The Hustle. Like, okay, we're going to play pool. He just kept going. And at the end of the night, I'll never forget it. He got on this this uh, this big Harley. I want to say it was white. Um, a road king. Old school shovel nose. And just fucking drove that thing straight as an arrow. Like right down the... Like people were good at it. Yeah. It's like the guitar player. You pra- How do you play drunk? I practice drunk. Like people yeah. drove <laughs> fucking drunk back then. They, I hope I'm not score- glorifying it. But I remember there was a few people that were actually... They were really good at it. They were. They are. They just function. That's their life. Yeah. They won't. So. Yeah. I, I got really good at pool, too. And then uh, I was better at pool, like, as a 13-year-old than I am right now. And he would bet on me to beat his friends, and I would beat him, like, a lot. And I was, I was good at darts, foosball. Yep. All the, all the, at, all the, all the American life. Legion games. <laughs> <laughs> that little stuffed animal claw. I just put a little little uh coat hanger with the fish hook on it and just flick them out and sell them all doing it for dad's approval oh yeah <laughs> hey dad i stole you this stuffed animal talk to me <laughs> now nah, he's a good he came around he had a heart surgery and mortality set in and now we have family dinner every week it just it it uh it, hey it took- some people gotta try to hook up with their cousin other people almost have to die <laughs> it's wherever you are <laughs> as long as you come out of that and you want to be a better person you know yeah that's what yeah, it is so well good for we're you close i'm happy for you thank you i'm happy you got a family now too my sister just sprouted out two kids they're the shit i'm not quite there yet but yeah. i'm getting there i'm getting close dude it's awesome and i'll tell you you yeah. have one kid you have a kid you have two kids you have a family it's weird yeah man. one kid you, you and your wife are kind of hey look what we did huh Right. Yeah. You have two kids. All of a sudden, it's the scheduling, and they're in. They're starting to interact with each other. Man, it's it's. Uh, yeah, my little son, man, he's my little buddy. Like he he digs football too. I see him because I try to turn him away from the TV because it's not good for him, and he, he he tries to look back at it like that. I, mean, I know. Yeah. I know he's just looking at the lights, but in my world, I'm like, yeah, this kid likes football. <laughs> First down. Yeah, I was actually watching my sister, my nephew Thaddeus, yesterday at the beach, and I put him on the surfboard. He's two, two and a half, and we're in the whitewash. We weren't deep, but I wasn't looking, and then a wave came, and he, and he flew off, and I fucking, I lost him for just like a little second, but I was just searching for his head to pop up like a buoy, you know, and I was frantic, and I ran, and I dove for him. I just picked him up. He was fine, but he, he wasn't even shook. He was like, I How was old is under, he? like two, What three. the fuck are you bringing a two-year-old into the ocean for? <laughs> No, we were like we were knee high. He could stand, but the wave got him. You know. Anyways, he had to be there. I gotta there, tell you Bill. this, man. There is nothing <laughs> in the world that scares me more than being in the ocean. Yeah. I fucking, I respect the ocean. I respect I, that riptide stuff, the sharks in the shallow water, and all. I used to do a bit about that. Like people go, you know, actually, you know, this guy tried to get me to go scuba diving. And the joke was, he said to me, you know, actually, 90% of shark attacks happen in shallow water. And I looked at him. I'm like, yeah, no shit. That's where the people are. <laughs> it's called the beach. Yeah. People aren't just swimming out into the fucking deep water out there. Dude, the ocean is, it's like all of those stories of people falling overboard on cruise ships. I, and all the classic tales you read. So many of them took sh- place on ships getting keel hauled and whaling and you stab the whale and the thing just takes off and you guys are in the fucking boat hoping this thing's not going to pull you under and that the and that the the ship's going to be able to find you i mean the balls (laughs) the balls of of people that they they actually got in wooden ships you know guided by the stars 
to find other lands to oppress with, with rape with and murder wind. is incredible. Uh, yeah, that too. But with wind too, like no engine, no gas, just wind. Like what happens when the wind stops? Oh, uh, you know the captain came up with some bullshit you had to do. <laughs> yeah. There's no and then he's in a grumpy mood, so now you gotta fucking do something. He probably just <laughs> killed somebody just to break up the monotony. Yeah, he walked the plank. <laughs> <laughs> he ate an apple, get him. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, getting like scurvy and all of that type of stuff, but um, yeah, so yeah, keep an eye on your kid. I'm kind of getting up against it because my kid's about ready to get up here in a minute. So give me give me one good one more good question. We've done a good 45 oh. minutes here. What do you got? Okay. Uh, oh yeah. I so a part of the theme of my podcast is at the end of it we uh, do you have any good stories where you shit your pants? That's embarrassing. It's the only theme I have. Shit my <laughs> pants. You know like what's funny? Other one. than when I was a toddler, only once in my adult life did I shit my pants, and I did it, <laughs> and I and I did it in front of my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and she nice. thought she thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I was in sweatpants, of course. Whenever you shit yourself, you you never have protection, and I was in my apartment in New York. And uh, she was being a jerk, so I was going to send one her way. Yeah. So I went, you know, I was really trying to make sure it reached her. Yeah. And I didn't realize maybe I had a salad the day before, and it was just the unmistakable that was beyond a, that was beyond a fart. And I went, yeah. oh shit, oh shit, and I stood up, and she she realized what happened was fucking crying. Like she went down to the floor. She was laughing so yeah. hard. And then I did the I shit myself walk around oh, the yeah. coffee table to go into the bedroom to go into the, into the bathroom. And she just died laughing. And I I was like, I couldn't believe she thought it was funny. Like, I don't think we were too far. Well, I guess we were far enough into the relationship that I was farting in front of her. But like, yeah, I, uh, I shit and myself. Your- and I had no one to blame but myself. <laughs> that's amazing. That's 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 a wife. That's a wife, you know? Yes. You shit and she loves you. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Because I always story. hear people going, You have a shark? Have you ever sharded? It's like, no, I haven't. You guys are fucking animals. And then like the one time I'm trying to be, you know, turning farting into being a prop, that's what ended up happening. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful when you push. I've sharded too many times. Anyways, well thank you so much. Congrats right, on dude. the family. Well, I love everything you do. I think you're hilarious, and I think you're going to do even more great things uh, to come after this COVID and stuff. you got a very unique vibe, and uh, you just, you're just fun to listen to. I watch every single Instagram video you put up. There's something about you. It's like your acting teacher said. I don't know what it is. Whatever you're doing, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's compelling, and I want to watch it. So whatever you're doing, well, thank keep doing you. it. All right. Thank you, man. I All appreciate right. you. Thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations on your kitchen. Thank you, man. All right. Congratulations Stop taking kids your... to the beach. I'll see you later. I... I'll send you this He's... audio. He lived. He lived. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. <laughs> Peace. That was the episode. Bill Burr. It got weird. Mainly me. I fucking <laughs> love that dude. I ain't going to lie. I was nervous. Anyways, he's the man. He's the shit. And that was fun as fuck. And I would like to uh, plug Comedy Showcase app, which I probably should have done uh, with him. But hey, <laughs> c'est la vie, c'est la fla, whatever. I don't know the saying. Anyways, Comedy Showcase app is a app where comics put their clips on the app, own all rights to it, and get paid all of the money right now. Later, it'll be two-thirds, but right now we're just trying to get it to more than 50 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like comedy, you like stand-up, you like supporting the underdog, the up-and-comer, that's not probably uh, not making much money, to be honest. This is it. It's, uh, it, it, it supports up-and-coming comics while they own all their material, all rights, and get paid for it. Now imagine if that was 20,000 subscribers. That means comics with several hundred dollars off their clips that's crazy anyways i love you all download comedy showcase app it's on apple only right now itunes only because uh we are in the negative and as soon as we reverse that we will be on android as well i love you all 
Thank you for liking Community Service Podcast. Subscribe, click link, like, 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 subscribe, <laughs> description. I love you all. Bill Burr. <laughs>